We needed to start establishing a base in Cape Town. To, to race in Cape Town, uh, we decided to start buying a better quality of horse. You know, I'm sure you've seen it the sales recently. We've been in the top uh, aggregate buyers, buying quality, buying a lot of well-bred horses. And, and um, not unfortunately, but I think that starts taking us away from what the RC started off with, was that somebody could get involved for like five or ten grand a year. I still got that, uh, that horse that's with Gareth Fanzel, a little bit naughty. Yes. I syndicated that horse on Facebook and the minimum share was one pound. Welcome to another edition of In the Box Seat. Warren Lee Inferno, Andrew Harrison, Tawanda Taravinga, and the entire team behind the scenes that make this production possible. It gives me great pleasure today to welcome one of our guests that uh, is of international standard. Uh, come all the way from uh, overseas to visit us in South Africa, as he always does. His name is Joe DeMarta, and uh, he's from the International Racing Club and uh, just a, a man of racing. Joe, how are you? Awesome. Lovely. Really good to be on your show. Thank you. And I know we've been trying to get you here and, and our diaries haven't uh, met, yeah. but you're here and we're here today and we, we're going to enjoy the next hour with you. We definitely are. I have been thinking about what to call you guys. I went with Horrell and Lardy. <laughs> Come on, you've got to step in now. <laughs> I'm the Lardy part. I'm the Horrell. <laughs> Love it. Uh, yeah, horrible. Yeah. The horrible, yeah. Oh. E, I don't know. Horrell, Horrell and Lardy, hey? Horrell and Lardy. So you've, you've claimed Lardy already, eh? Yeah, so boy. you're making me horrible. No, no not horrible. <laughs> horrible. <laughs> no, lovely to have Joe. I think yeah. that sets the benchmark for <laughs> yeah. um, okay, okay, this is, yeah, we don't. Yeah. Pod, we are, we can, I think we, the podcast is over. That's a wrap from us. Joe's <laughs> going home. <laughs> Joe, let's uh, speak about your business and, and let you explain to the viewers um, about your business, about your operation. What is it? How is it? Who do you do it with? Um, and also your, your opinion on syndication and racehorse ownership. I, I, I go straight to the jugular first straight question. Straight in with that. Straight in with that. Tell us about your business. Who's Joe DeMato? What does he do? I've uh, always been in racing for, like, so I think it's 47 years. Jeez, okay. Yeah. Um, always wanted to own, always stood downstairs and looked up and wanted to be up, wondered what it was like, and dabbled in a few shares and a few horses along the years and then about six years ago, Mike Darst and I got together. We formed the International Racing Club with a view of bringing people into South Africa and racing, showing them. Actually, we decided on KZN, to be fair. Do you know what I mean? Because it was just brilliant bringing me out, go golfing. We've done a couple of whale trips out here. It's just really, really good. So that was the view. Um, and like everything else in life, things evolve, right? So I think at the last count, I've got like about 40 people from the UK to get involved in South African sure. racing. 10%, 20%, um, and, and, that's, oh, and that's the journey up until about a year ago, you know, um, when um, I've known Chris for a long time. Um, Mike sort of wanted to step back from the RC being in the sort of front of it all the time, um, and we restructured. So um, Mike and I still work together, and Mike's doing all our bloodstock for us. Um, as you know, we've got the farm just up the road, Ziggy, uh, Alec Leds X does all our pre-training for us, along with uh, Dennis Bosch helps out. Um, Mike does the bloodstock, and then Chris and I, I've known Chris for a very long time. Chris's mom and I actually raced together in England, so okay. she lives in England. She's amazing, like proper punter of note. <laughs> <laughs> I love her. Um, and then Chris started saying to me, listen, I really want to get into ownership with you in South Africa. I said, okay, cool. And I, to be honest with you, that sort of coincided with Greg taking over uh, in the Cape, you know, and making it far more attractive to race not only KZN but in the Cape as well. So that's who, that's those are the steps we started taking. Greg, Greg, Greg being Greg Bortz. Bortz, okay. Yeah, you know what what they've done down in the Cape, incentivising people to go there and race, up, upping the stake money, it's just been remarkable. Sure. You know. Um, and it's the attention to detail that I really liked. And Chris, because Chris lives in Geneva, and most of the people, to be fair, when they come over from the UK, they want to go to Cape Town. For sure. Do you know sure. what I mean? Like, it just is what it is, right? So we needed to start establishing a base in Cape Town. To, to race in Cape Town, 
uh, we decided to start buying a better quality of horse. You know, I'm sure you've seen at the sales recently, we've been in the top uh, aggregate buyers, buying quality, buying a lot of well-bred horses. And, and un not unfortunately, but I think that starts taking us away from what the RC started off with, was that somebody could get involved for like five or ten grand a year. I still got that, uh, that horse that's with Gareth Fanzel, a little bit naughty. Yes. I syndicated that horse on Facebook, and the minimum share was one pound. Jeez, okay. One pound. One pound. And, and there's a guy that bought one share for a pound. Jeez. There's a guy that bought 3,000 shares, but sure. do you know what I mean? Like, um, so I, I do think there's a, a gap for that. Sure. But one pound's a lot of money. 20, Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it, get, <laughs> it, gets, it, gets, it gets worse by the day, or better, I don't know. I think it's a 22.40 or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I do think there's scope for, the, and I'll, as a racing man, I want the man on the street to get involved. Yes. But it, but we ran it as a non-profit, so you know, the admin becomes really, really laborious. It becomes expensive to manage. You know, if you've got a thousand guys on the books, it's expensive to manage them every yeah, month. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I just think we've evolved. We've got a step up, better quality of horse. I will always like to get people involved. Um, Chris wants to spend time in Cape Town wants to race quality horses in group races so that's where we're heading i know that you are based in where exactly are you based i know you are you in england i'm uh, in england yeah so i live about 50 miles or 80 kilometers west of london in a town called basingstoke okay my nearest trainer and very good friend is andrew balding okay so he's about 10 k's from me okay and yeah um that's where i live Tony Carroll also trains for you guys over there, Tony Carroll. And uh, yeah. in fact, there was Winnetka that ran last night, isn't it? Yeah, so Winnetka ran last night. Tony is, I was hard to explain Tony because he's quite an under the radar trainer, but he's got over 100 horses. Sure, okay. Yeah. Um, and I speak to all my trainers over here about Tony. So, um, and I had Pierre Stratum out there last year. Pierre and James Goodman came to, to England. We do a lot of golf days. I'm sure we'll touch on that later. We do a lot of golf days for charity, and they came out, and uh, I took them up to Tony Carroll. So Tony trains on carpet. Sure. Yeah. Carpet. But, yeah, but obviously pieces of carpet. Yes, yes, yes. You know, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Long pieces of carpet. <laughs> <you know. laughs> yeah, he trains on pieces of carpet, um, and Pierre was amazed. So very kind on the horses. Very kind on the horses. You'll see one of my horses with Tony, Poetic Force, is I think 10 years old now. Sure, and still going. I think we've won three races with, a, with him this year. Sure. You know, um, Tony's That's got, interesting. you know, he runs him, trains him on the carpet. They get turned out every day for like four or five hours. So. I love to listen to his voice notes when he sends the assessment because obviously we're involved with you yes. guys. And uh, it's every voice note. Good morning, everybody. Tony Carroll speaking. That's a, a st stock standard. The same voice notes. <laughs> was, was, he, was he a jump jockey at once? He was a jump jockey. Yeah, yeah. I remember the name. Yeah. He was a jump jockey. He's, he's got a fantastic spread where he is. It's all his. Um, look, I've, I've been blessed. I've had horses with Tony. I've had horses with Mark Johnson. I've had horses with Andrew. I've had horses with um, Simon Dow. But... Tony's just where he trains. You go, you drive up there. It's near Cheltenham, and it's just awesome. Really, should be on everybody's bucket list, by the way. So, what I wanted to ask you is that you're based in, in England, and obviously you've got an involvement in South Africa. Do you find it difficult to manage all this and to keep your finger on the pulse? You know, being internationally based. No. Obviously not, because you're doing it so well. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I don't. Look, we paid school fees, eh? Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Mike and I paid a lot of school fees, but I think, obviously it's an opinion, but I think selecting your trainer, selecting your team, if you hear every every successful person, whether it be football, American football, whatever it is, it's all about the team, right? Nobody ever speaks about themselves. So I don't have to stress about the farm. Mike and I don't have to stress about the farm. Chris doesn't have to stress about the farm because Ziggy's got it under control. Mike's got the bloodstock under control. We've got the form analysis under control. The trainers we select, Obviously, we talk to them. We, we expect communication. We expect to be involved. Racing's a fantastic sport. You know that. We all know that, right? You can buy a share in Man United or 100 shares in Man United. You won't get to play there. Yeah. But you can buy a share in, in racing and you can play at the highest league yeah. on the biggest days. Yeah. So if we're going to play along, we want to be involved. That's yeah. how we are. Yeah, 100%. You know, it's, it's a good I, point, that. Very, very good point. 
speak you through. No. Oh, um, I was taking a breath. Okay. You're one of those things that you put up. Yeah, you must, you you must talk, boy. Talk. You must oh, not be scared no, no, to talk. No, no. <laughs> Doesn't like his nickname. Haven't had a dig yet. Haven't had a dig yet. No, no, you know, <laughs> stop it now. None of that nonsense. Now, you're in, I, I say your, but uh, it's the team, but we're talking to you. I'm not talking to yeah. your team now. So okay. I say your investment, the team's investment, Chris, your investment in South Africa. How big is it? Well, purchases alone, I'd say we're north of 25. Sure. And then monthly must be 250, 300, and that's been for five years, so I don't know. I didn't mean you to... To, <laughs> to be that specific. No, no, same, but I, I know you're not scared to say, say it as it is, it but is I, I didn't is, want to put you on the spot. But I, I, the point I'm trying to get across is the magnitude of your operation in South Africa. That's the one I'm trying to say. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but but huge. like, if you're going to ask me that question, like, I'm going to take you down the road that that is no more important than the guy who's put in... 5,000, yeah. we've got one horse, yeah. like, yeah. I really, you know, racing's like a human body, we need all the parts for it to work, Absolutely. you know, so Absolutely. it can't just be us with 20 or 30 horses, or, or our dear friends bossing in them with 100, or whatever it is, you know, the guy, because the field is also made up of the guy with one horse, yeah. or the girl 100%. with one horse, do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, so quite right. Look, the investment comes from passion, obviously, from, um, from wanting to get people involved, and now we're obviously taking it to another level because now we really want to make we really want to make a difference. We want to raise quality at the highest level on the biggest days and have fun. Humdinger is one of the horses that we must talk about because Humdinger just is just a soldier. Wow, yeah, Humdinger man, she's she's just been. You know, it's weird, like because you dream about having good horses and then when they come, you know. People say, oh, no. trainers all say, oh, good horses train themselves, right? Yeah, they do, but like, planning what you're going to do with a good horse is far harder than what you're going to do with an MR70, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Because like, an MR70, they just look up at the program and they go, oh, we'll run it here and we'll run it there. But, like, you know, we have discussions and, you know, it, it, like Mike, you know, for years, I never had, I've known Mike for a long time. I never had horses until I sent him Humdinger. And it's almost as if you think they're on, like, like they're such a top trainer that you can't speak to them, but it's like completely the opposite, you know? Okay. And, and with Mike, it's just like, oh, I don't know, we're going to do this, but we're going to run her there, and then I'm not sure if she'll see how, do you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's not easy. And with that other horse, Money Heist as well, with Gareth, like planning the sources, because Gareth said, like, this is a really good horse, what are we going to do with him? And you've got to plan and plan, and then the plan doesn't go well, and then you get a bad draw, and then you get this, yeah. do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. so, but Humding has been unbelievable. Um, her full sister was also very good, uh, Glacier Gold. Okay. Uh, Alan Greef right. had, had that. I, I'm pretty sure. I haven't seen her run for a long time. I'm pretty sure she's making babies at the moment. <laughs> and obviously, Humdinger uh, touch wood will head that way. Yeah. So, tell me, um, let's go on to, on to Money Heist. I mean, you, you signed up here to... to yeah. Controversially? Yeah. Are you talking about the two and a half kilos or just generally? No, 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 just generally. I mean, yeah, yeah. Did you not listen to the post-race interview yesterday? No. Or did you have load shedding? No, I did listen. <laughs> Were you singing Hello Darkness, My Old Friend? No, I was doing the race card at the same time. Okay. Yeah, well, don't yeah, have I a dig at me about the race card. I can't present on TV, run a race meeting uh, in the presenting studio and do a race card. Hey, TV, guys, I'm just... still here, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we just... No, okay, we've got to go. No, 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 you've got to get... Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I just stands in the winner's box and talks rubbish. So we... He said it is a lovely interview. Okay, so uh, Humdinger wins his maiden, I think it's Scottsville if I'm not mistaken. Money and, House. Oh, Money House, sorry. Money House wins. What did you say? Humdinger. Uh, Humdinger, yeah, Money House, Money House. Oh, she also won her maiden in Scottsville. Yeah. yeah. Good course. <laughs> yes. Um, and and Gareth says to me, listen, this is a proper horse. Um, we want to go for the Cape Guineas. But it was quite late in the season, so we had to make decisions. How do we get there? Because, again, good horse, how do you get there? So, and who is going to ride him? And at the time, Muzi had ridden a few other good three-year-olds. So we weren't sure what was going on. And we floated the idea of Pierre. So I've known Pierre for a very long time. Um, and it was conditioned that he rode it in the, uh, I think it was a graduation, if I'm not mistaken, at Gravel. Mm. Two and a half kilos over. We got done on the line. Happens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but it didn't matter because... That, wasn't, that was just a stepping stone to the Selengor, then we drew badly. Um, he, he, look, he's a good horse. However, he has started hemo, hemo concentrating or yeah, something? Yeah, hemo concentrating, yeah. So, um, yesterday's was evident. I mean, if you look at, from the moment he jumped, his head was up in the air. He gave Akti a 
torrid time. It was it, the Shalini was out at the top of the straight. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, and he was long odds on. <laughs> I think would have been lynched if he got beaten because yeah, he must have been everyone's banker. And, yes. And that brought his own pressure. Funnily enough, do you know what I mean? Because we're not punters. You know, everybody thinks I'm a big punter. I'm not a punter at all. But you like to have a flutter. You have a little interest. I'll in have it. I back every horse of my even Winnetka. Tony yesterday said Winnetka effectively couldn't run well because it was so poorly drawn. drawn yeah. I still yeah. had my fifty pound each way. Yeah. I'll do that on all my horses. For sure. But. You're but not a big fire, right? I'm not a big... No, no, no. I, I like playing exotics when I'm here. Obviously, there I can't play them. Um, but I, I knew that yesterday this horse was everybody's banker. So yeah, but it's brought, extra pressure. It's a little bit of... Do you know what I mean? It's weird pressure because you're thinking, like, you're standing right there, everybody's watching. And you know what, Joe? Sorry to interrupt you. You know, I felt bad in the sense that... And, I, and we've got audience uh, while we record our podcast. So there's our, the trainer of money. There's, there's the, the trainer, the, the yeah. Team. But I, I felt bad and I want him to hear because... While we were presenting, yes, he was everybody's banker, and, and I want your opinion too, uh, Grumps, I mean, uh, uh, Andrew. Um, he walked into the parade, he looked a picture. Oh, so it? we went on and on about it, Rahil and I, and he actually said to me, well, hang on, you know, we, we, we're telling everybody how beautiful this horse is, and, and he's odds on, and he's got the form, and, you know, we're putting everybody under pressure, and I said to him, well, I understand that, but we're just doing what we are paid to do we are yeah. telling the people what we are seeing and we what i saw yesterday was faultless you know so yes you, you don't want to not say it because you don't want to put people under pressure so you're yeah. stuck between a bit of a rock oh, and a hard place so we also we were screaming in the studio because we had obviously said banker looks the good thing looks the part so everybody had the pressure but what i'm saying is that we had to do that because it, everything we said is what it was the horse yeah. looked phenomenal so it does yeah, put extra it, pressure it's on. a very very good looking horse um but to be honest with you, from my perspective, yesterday's outcome was perfect. Because had he won by 10 lengths, which he was rated to, he was 22 yes. pound ahead. Had he won by 10 lengths, we might have thought that we got him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. And the fact that he just won by short head, I, I, I said to you straight after, like, he is being booked in... To have his, did you hear what Joe said? He's, he's learned to lose his two best Chinas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a great turn. Two stone lighter. Oh, two stone I put it in the headline in, in today's paper. Did you? Yeah. Did you? What did you say? So you still had to write a good article, eh? I always write a good article. Thank you. Look, I, I, I've, I've, I don't have an eye for a horse working. I don't have an eye for a horse at the sales. For me, I only care in the form. That's when I get involved, really. Like, But when you own a horse and you know about all the background stuff that's happening, yeah. then... It does open up your eyes a little bit more, right? Sure. So, I'm telling you that that horse will run to his rating. <coughs> and he's got a pretty lofty rating. He's rated 106 or something at the moment. And he, he can carry that. He's, he floats. I mean, he's sound. He recovers well after a serious bit of work. But I just think this is going to make a big difference yeah. to his career. But and sometimes it's, it's a case of the more you know, the less <coughs> chance you've got of winning. You know? yeah. <laughs> oh, definitely. Because when you see all the, you know, what, what I liked what, about him yesterday, behind the scenes. So. Well, what I liked about him yesterday was the fact that you know he, he didn't help out and deal with the whole way around. But mm. those last two jumps, he almost. I said to Gareth when we were watching the replay, you know, not that I'm a professor on racing, we learn every day. But he just those last two strides, he stuck his head out. He said, yeah. "Okay, well, that's what I must do." There's the and, line, and, and and that was it. You know, and with no disrespect to any jockey, including my one of my best friends, Striker. What happened yesterday was the best thing for that horse because Ati obviously got on a good horse, doesn't get them often, yeah. and he was under pressure and he gave that horse a proper ride. Yeah. That horse knew he was in a horse race yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what? I'm not saying Pierre wouldn't have or anybody else would have, but you know when you're riding a horse like that and you've got to bring the Shalele out at the 500, sometimes it's just easier to go, you know what? Yeah. He gave you best, but I didn't want to punish him. He got a good couple of smacks yesterday, which has done him the world of good. good I'm up, but yeah. yeah, you know, because they need to mature as well. They're racehorses, right? They're not... Uh, yeah. Like a few children, I know. <laughs> <laughs> are, we allowed, are we still allowed to hit children in South Africa? No. no. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, but uh, it was definitely a good a good ride and a good race. Yeah, it was very good. Uh, yeah. But your kids are on our old and one's living in Seychelles, the other one's two are guarding in the Bushveld. They've never got a clap in their lives. Yeah, you see, and you've raised two beautiful children, very intelligent, doing very well. Yeah. Sending tickets for their father to go on holiday in Seychelles, I tell you. Oh, we so can't cool. go on holiday in Pine Town, never mind Seychelles. Yeah, At least he doesn't have to take his shoes off when he goes through customs and security. <laughs> <laughs> are you, are you going to travel without shoes? 
Well, they take they tell you to take them off when you get there. So like, oh, well, I'm fine. Then. You're, you're hundreds. If you're going to get onto the plane. You probably they will never allow you to walk on an aeroplane international flight with no shoes. Of course they will. Hey. Huh? He identifies as a shoeless person. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not go down that road, please. Next point. Tell us about Fiddler's Green. Uh, Fiddler's Green. I've met people that have identified as teapots, that have identified yeah. as pot plants. Uh, uh, yeah, but we're not going to go down that road. If they want to be identified uh, be a as a teapot... It'll be a two-hour show. Yeah, it'll be a two-hour show. If they with want to libel. be identified as a teapot... With libel afterwards. With? With libel. libel. Yeah, no, no, definitely not. Let's move uh, on to Fiddler's Green and talk about Fiddler's Green. Beautiful Fiddler's Green. Beautiful Fiddler's Green, yeah. So, Barcy, Suzette, Mike and Laura purchased it, I'm not sure, but three or four years ago. Um, I think the strike rate, I think of the last 40 horses or 35 horses that have been brought up there, pre-trained there, I think 33 of one, and this includes Cleaver, Humdinger, Money Heist, all of these horses, so they're clearly doing something right. Look, we're also purchasing, you know, when the RC started, we bought a horse called Tombola for 5,000 Rand. Yes. You know, and now we're buying horses for 800,000 Rand, so... We're not buying precocious horses. We're giving them time. We don't put Ziggy under any pressure. They're ready when they're ready. Um, of course, it's nice to have two-year-old winners and be involved in that early part of the season. But we, we really, really want to race in the classics. Krish, <laughs> Krish wants anything over two thousand meters. That's his game, right? He's okay. like, he calls it ferret racing. I'm sure he's watching. <laughs> ferret racing. Well, he's blooming right too. I is he? So too, oh, yeah. he's going to be your ferret, best ferret racing. He's ah. going to be your best friend from now on. Yeah, well, like, so when I t- you, yeah, oh, when he's when he, you know, but even like um, Cleaver, because Chris, Chris, Chris got a share in Cleaver. He was just like, oh mate, what is this? A thousand meter horse, <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm like, uh, just anyway. So, so everybody will tell you horses need time. Um, I'm a firm belie- firm. I've become even a firmer believer. Uh, I've read a lot, we read a lot. You know, in Australia, for example, horses are not in training for a whole year. They go into training, they race, then they go to a farm, they rest, they become horses again. So, uh, this isn't an, a, an attack or, or anything like that with the trainers, but like, I see it with Tony Carroll. I see him racing nine year olds. Why? Because he turns them out every day. Yeah. They, they, they're horses first. You know, um, going from here to a box for 16 hours a day or going from here and eating grass, there's got to be, even if it's anecdotal, there's got to be an advantage. Mm-hmm. So we bring the horses, Fiddlers brings the horses on slowly. When they're ready, they're going to training. Trainers seem to be happy with what we're doing. Nobody's going, oh, we don't like how you've prepared it or whatever. And the results are starting to come through, you know. So. And Ziggy, uh, you, you must have met Ziggy, Alexander's <coughs> ex-wife, the most wonderful lady, a top horsewoman, isn't she? Oh, she's... So she knows her way around. It was blindfolded. Yeah, she's... And, and, and you know, they, they love them. Or everybody yes. does. Like, you've said this thousands of times. Everybody in racing loves horses and loves animals, and we're all into that kind of thing. Correct. But, like, we don't all have the skills to do that, right? Sure. She does. She's got the patience, the skills to break them in and... And, you know, Chris has come out, Chris's wife, Clemence, she's come out and spent time on the farm. They've just loved it, you know. So that's also part of the racing. You know, I don't think racing is just about the race day. Yeah, it's the whole experience. The whole experience. And, like, Frankel's greatest achievement wasn't winning 14 races in a row. Frankel's greatest achievement was Henry Cecil getting him to the races on time 14 times in a row. (laughs) Because it's a challenge, right? It's hard. They don't eat, they they hemoconcentrate, they bump their leg I mean it's so difficult so you might as well enjoy it when it's good and just I think take time with them that's our philosophy how did you meet Chris Chris Nagendran is his name and uh, when he's in South Africa next please I know he was at the Met with you guys I, I missed him yeah uh, I just got to the box a little late but as I was going up the, the guys well, you have not it. absolutely what oh, are you doing geez. wait I'm surprised you haven't noticed my sponsored jacket yet normally you insult me <laughs> where'd you scale that from yeah, well you see where did I scale that I don't know why you say I scale that but people like and, me and I think they like me they and, give and me a sponsored jacket a special jacket. Rent, um, all, your, all your stuff I have got I've got uh, my poor stepdaughter's cupboard has been t- she keeps she says I can't find my clothes and my Amongst all your sponsored kit. Wow. And there was. I wouldn't I, be I mean, proud I've got of an that. international racing club jacket too in my cupboard. I've got, you know. 
Anyway, no, I lost no, my train. No. So yes, I was at the Met. I'm loving no. it. And I know Chris was there, but I missed him. But be that as it may, how did you meet him? When are we going to see him again? Uh, he was here. He left two days ago. But he's mainly, mainly in Cape Town. His business is in Cape Town. I've known him for a long time. Okay. Um, like I said, I'm, I had his mom and uh, stepdad at Cheltenham with me f- for two nights. We had a beautiful cottage. They are just the nicest people. Like, you know, we were, I think, 11 eventually at, at our cottage. And before she's even come down, she's phoned me and said, okay, Joe, like, um, what food am I making? So Indian lady makes beautiful food. So she cooked, my friend Andrew's wife cooked. We had a spread there for 11. We had a f- couple of international rugby players there. And that's what it's about. Do you know what I mean? Like, so I've known them a long time. And then Chris, Chris has always wanted to get involved. But, you know, I think it was easier to find me. Uh, after, you know what I mean? We, we spoke a lot. Obviously, Mike and I paid a lot of school fees. So it's been, I would say, it's been okay for Chris to get involved. Okay. Now I look after him. Um, obviously, we're good friends, but, you know, there's also that we've got to be strict with what we do, sure. what yes, we yes. purchase, how we purchase it, where we raise them, how we want to raise them. Um, and we've got to stick to that. And we, we do stick to that. Joe, do you select your, how do you select trainers? Because I know that uh, just off the top of my head, I can't remember everybody that you've got horses with, but I know obviously you've got uh, with, with Gareth, and that's so exciting because uh, he's got uh, a lovely organization. We interviewed him the other day at the races. So there's Gareth. I know that you support Tony Peter, uh, the young trainers, the young up-and-coming trainers. But how do you select your trainers? Is it sort of the horse for the trainer, or, or how, how, does, how do you work it out? Uh, it's, uh, it's a combination of a lot of stuff, mostly school fees. Um, look, the stats don't lie. Yes. Okay, so uh, like, I, 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 I don't want to sound overly controversial, but like, if you see, I don't say, I see it as small trainers or big trainers. Okay. Okay, I don't see it like that. Because, for example, Tony Peter isn't a big trainer, he's got 30 horses in his yard. Correct. Okay, so I think. Placing horses, how do they place their horses and how do they run, okay? If you've, if you've got an MR60 horse, you're not running it against MR80s. You're running it against other MR60s, okay? So I expect it to be consistent in that level. Sure. There's no excuse. This is what handicapping is all about. So <coughs> I, do, I do like to look at the stats. Some trainers achieve more than others. I, I don't know if it's just because of the horse or because of the training methods, I wouldn't like to single any of that out. What I, what I do think is, for us, we like to communicate, we like to be involved, okay? So somebody like Michael de Kock, I'm able to speak to Michael, do you know what I mean? Like, it's not as if he's unapproachable. I can say to him, listen, what do you think? He goes, oh, I think I'm gonna do this, I might do that. Um, same with um, Gareth over here, you know, uh, Tony. Same thing. First thing Tony Peter said to me, so I've known Tony for for a while, um, was you tell me who's riding your horse. Okay. So I don't know. I, I don't care. He says Warren used to ride for us because he rode well for us. But if you want somebody else on your horse, it's fine. I don't have a problem with that. So just that helps. Yes. You know, um, I've watched a lot of your podcasts. Some some owners say, you know, I leave everything to the trainer, and I'm not saying that that's wrong. Okay. I'm saying that doesn't work for us. Okay, it doesn't work for us. Not because I'm training the horse, but because is it possible that I have an idea that maybe you haven't thought about, you know? And and it's not just because we're investing or anything like that. Like like I said to you earlier, the Man United analogy. That's what racing is supposed to be about. You're supposed to buy in and be able to have the experience. If it was just buying in and just standing back, yeah, yeah, different story. We we wouldn't we wouldn't be. I mean, we've. You know, we, 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 we've got a box at Kenilworth, we've got a box here at Gravel, we're purchasing horses. You know, like it's, it's an investment, you know, and, if, and for example, if I bring somebody over from the UK and I introduce him to a trainer here and the trainer says to him, um, please don't come into my yard because you're wearing green or <laughs> whatever, do you know what I mean? Like, you know, because you get, you get people like that in racing, unfortunately, right? Like, it's like a barrier to entry straight off the bat yes. straight off the bat like you know so i think the people that we deal with at the moment are receptive to how we want to race you know gareth and i speak often G- gareth and chris speak often you know 
uh, money heist's career up until now wasn't done on a woman of prayer. It was like planned. And do you know what? Plans don't always come together. Sure. Oh, obviously not. But at least there's a plan and there's plan, communication yeah. and dialogue. So that's how we choose them. Okay. Um, yeah. Interesting. Uh, very interesting. And, and, you know, you talk about superstitions. Yeah. I, I, people ask me, well, you know, are you superstitious? And, and sometimes I am a little superstitious, but for me, it would you know, the superstition is not a deal breaker. You know, I, I, if, if somebody says to me, uh, like during the running of a race, my worst is, my pet hate is with four or five hundred to go, don't tell me what have you backed here. Oh. You know, that's my worst. I mean, it's, that stops it in its tracks. But I mean, I'm still going to have a bet in the next race. So, But you get some people that are really superstitious. Quick story about superstition. A dear friend of mine in the podcast is not about me, it's about us. Many years ago, uh, my vehicle had to go into the panel beaters. Uh, panel beaters a lot, eh? but anyway, that's for another day. Long story short, I was given a hired car, green in color. The, the Vodacom Durban July at that stage. I go and fetch him from his apartment in Amschlange. Bless him, our dear friend. He's unfortunately had a massive stroke and he's out of action in Cape Town. But I fetch him in a green car. He, he walks in, he says, he walks to the car, he says, what are you doing? I said, we're going to the July. He said, in a green car. I said, Yes, he said, I'm not going. I'll walk or I'm not going. I said, don't be stupid. Come on. He says, I'm not going. I said, if you don't get in this car now, you and I are over. Get in the car. The whole way to the race course, the every single robot went red. He's, because he says, now every robot is red. Now it's the, the river. It must be green for go. He said, if I lose money, I said, if you lose money today, I will reimburse you every cent. Now shut up. We're going to the July. <coughs> yeah. How much do you think he won? 180,000 Randy won on the July. I said, no. He said, and the green car? He said, I want to buy the green car. <laughs> <Wow. laughs> but anyway, so superstitions, Listen, everyone has their own little bits and bobs. There's people in Scotland that support rangers that don't eat lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, I, I, had, I had a mate of mine, uh, you know, he used to be the chief sub editor at The Witness when I worked there, uh, Billy Brisbane, and he was a rangers supporter. And they uh, they they signed up uh, Mo Johnson right. from Celtic. He got his Rangers tie and he cut it up and fed it to the dog. He said, "That's yeah, it, that's I'm it. out." <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so yeah. all but a little bit, little bit. Yeah. But, but the, uh, the question I'm asking: Are you superstitious? I mean, uh, uh, you are. Uh, 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 so I think it's more about decorum. So my <laughs> sister, for example, doesn't punt at all. But sometimes I've had to send it out to the local Hollywood bets. So every time she goes, because she's got five kids, she always backs number five. And I started to take it upon herself to tell me that she's doing that after she's put money on for me. And I'm like, please, I, to, I literally, yesterday I said to her, by the way, we have to have a chat about this. Literally, it's only been going on for two weeks because she's never had a bet in her life. I said to her, you've got to stop telling me what you've backed. If you've backed against me, I don't want to know. You don't want to know, yeah. She said to me, why not? I said, because there can only be one winner. Yeah. She goes, oh, I didn't think about it like that. I said, Do you know what I mean? So I think that's more like you. You don't yeah, really want to hear. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah, but silly, um, silly little thing. No, I, I'm, not, I'm not that superstitious. So uh, you, would, you would wear green underpants to the races? Well, I, I, yeah, I, I would, would wear anything. <laughs> no, but I've had a trainer, for example, yesterday. So yesterday, Gareth and I walked from the centre of the parade ring at Scottsville through the number three box. Oh. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Oh. I've had train- three is better. I would never do the second box. Three, okay, I don't mind. But, but I've had a trainer before who said to me, no, you, like, you wouldn't talk to me for a week. I'm like, are you joking, <laughs> dude? Like, are you, are you absolutely certifiable? <laughs> anyway, but Money House did win, so that's that one scuppered, yeah, right? Absolutely. So from now on, do I keep walking through the number three box? <laughs> yeah. You must walk around now because it'll win by further next time. <laughs> <laughs> how many winners do you know, Joe, have the, you had the syndicate? The t- how many winners are you guys? Uh, yeah, we've had quite a lot. So we don't get the credit that we deserve because I'm not privy about the colours, Warren. Okay. I, I, I know you should really love your colors which i do <coughs> but i've never ever had a problem if one of the partners wanted to race a horse in their colors we've never had that issue and also at the risk of sounding critis critis or whatever the right word is of the system that's in place right um, and our friends passing them suffered from this the stakes don't get allocated <coughs> Um, if you've got multiple partners. Oh, uh, yes. <coughs> yeah. Sorry. Um, let me set a support. Yes, do you have a sip of water while you're doing that? Um, do you we, know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. No, no, it's, it's the, 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 
the split the, the split the states. splitting yeah, yeah, the i splitting. mean we live in 2023 technology can do anything when we submit our authority to access stuff we put what percentages of, of the bank you're getting paid so i don't see why so the rc never feature ever in stakes earned because it's rc and the gendron <coughs> ionc rc and the manferna do you know what i mean that, and it, it's something that could easily be fixed um but i think we're nearing 100 sure. uh, what is your that's a fantastic oh, it's not bad yeah. no, and damn. in england i think we're on about 20. okay she's there fantastic yeah. You remember you 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 were remember you had some time you enjoyed having a she and a horse. You were also a bit of a successful owner, weren't you? I was very successful. I had yeah. two horses and they both won a lot of lot of races. Yeah, and absolutely. I was both shoot the Mark breeze, Dixon, both shoot the Mark breeze, Dixon, yeah. Yeah. keen accord. Okay. <coughs> the young rider Jason Gates whom uh, you've been quite instrumental in, in, you know, you were at his wedding, uh, of yep. which obviously I was the MC at, and, and you keep a keen interest in his career, and, and he's, he seems to be coming good now. He's, he's, he yeah. hasn't had it easy, young Jason, but uh, yeah. a man with a, with a what's the word? Uh, he's, a good, he's, got a, he's quite a stubborn youngster, but he, yeah. he knows what he wants, and, and it's nice to see that things are coming good for him now. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of him. I had dinner with him last night. Um, or I, I had um, a boiled egg, but uh, they, they seem to eat quite a lot. Um, yeah, the journey's been long with Jason. Um, I think it's also about four years. Um, I, I just gave him like advice as an older person. Do you know what I mean? I, I made him watch like Dennis Rodman movies and videos and interviews about doesn't matter how, how good you are if you don't get your stuff together yeah it falls away right you know and I, I made him watch the Barty Leisha I don't know if you guys have watched the Barty Leisha um, thing on YouTube you know about riding always trying ride for the public you know so yeah it's, Jason's good yeah. <coughs> the, you, I want your input here as well now um, I, not a disagreement is the wrong word Funny enough, I was reading a text this morning from somebody, and it's amazing how one wrong word in can, can, can make the whole conversation different. But you and I have had a lot of laughs and fun about dress code at the races. I'm a very much a, a stickler uh, for dress code. I know you're a shorts man and a no-shoes man, but I, 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 I must be honest, it does... I like to see the, the long pants and the tie, and etc. <coughs> Whereas you, you're, you've got a lovely different opinion where it's not really so important to you and tell us why. Oh, because there's so many other barriers yeah. before you get into the parade ring, right? Like you've got to first get horsed into the parade ring. So yeah. <laughs> why are we adding barriers? I, I think if it's Royal Ascot, if it's the July, that's a different story. Um, I get age restrictions because something can happen. Yeah, I understand safety, that part. Safety, safety yeah. I get that. Um, can you ever be too casual? I don't know. Can you? I mean, who decides? Like, who decides? Yeah, I don't know. Like, Warren, I, I, I don't think that that should be on a Tuesday afternoon. Yes. The deciding factor. Yeah. Right. Next time I go to Scottsville, no shoes, shorts and t-shirts. <laughs> well. Yeah, I don't think it should be the deciding factor. I, I, I think, I think racing is keeps shooting itself in the foot you know with regards to marketing etc etc and hopefully um if you're an owner and you want to dress up then muzzle off like just go for it like warren i don't even own a tie so like do i have to go buy one because i've put 20 million rand into horse racing yeah yeah really yeah, yeah. No, sure I, I, I don't know yeah. but so but so you won't catch me at royal ascot i, I don't go so I don't want to dress like a penguin. I, I don't want to be claustrophobic. I just want to be comfortable. Free. And free. I mean, and yeah, we've got... Uh, yeah, we got shoeless uh, steel shoes, no elements himself. Yeah, 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 100%. <laughs> so, look, I mean, obviously, not obviously, but I, I, I'm also here. Not, I only came uh, this week because of, obviously, Billy Bolex is running in the derby. So I'll wear a nice pair of trousers, but I just want to wear a golf shirt. I'm not going to, like... Yeah, yeah. No, sure. I was just to look, look respectable. <coughs> yeah, basically. Yeah, but as Joe's yeah, saying, I mean, to to, throw, to, to, so to to be to to stir the pot a bit more, not stir the pot. It's no, a debate. It's a discussion. You said to look a bit respectable. Then, if what happens if I want to go to the races dressed like this? You know, I said, well, I, I so feel I'm respectable. 
Yeah, so yeah. well, but we can t we can extrapolate that even a bit further, right? So you can look respectable, sit next to me, but you haven't showered for five weeks and you smell. <laughs> so, but, but we we don't stop. We don't say, listen, you have to smell nice when you come to the races. Or do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, well, yeah. Just so what's sit next to him? Yeah. yeah, but what's more offensive? Is it an, is it really offensive to have somebody in shorts in the parade ring? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Possibly no. not. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's just something we wanted to touch on because yeah. I know you and I have had a lot of yeah, we've chats. Had a few. And, uh, not fights, are we don't oh, fight. Golf is, is a big thing. It's not only about racing, it's about golf too. Yeah, what is about funnels, they call it, these kids. So I've got to funnel people into racing. Okay, So I can either go out and look for people to come straight into racing, which means I've got to find somebody that's in racing or into racing, which is really difficult, okay? Or I can, and I'm, I'm, I'm playing with 100 people, or I can play with 20,000 people through my golf days and hopefully find one or two that get into racing, okay? So that coupled with the great golf courses we have here in KZN, great golf courses in um, Cape Town, it's so much easier to say to the guys, listen, come, to, come for a week to South Africa. You're gonna be in a private box, you're going to go racing, you're going to play a couple of rounds of golf, you're going to go look at some whales out at sea. It's just so much, yeah, it's such, a, such an easier sell than take 10% of this racehorse. Because yeah. when I come here, it's like here to Summerfell, and we have breakfast here, the chances of them buying in just go through but the roof. Zero. Oh, yeah. No, no, yeah, go yeah, through, the through the roof. Yeah, 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 yeah. But buying it off a brochure or buying it off... Hey, come along. And it's really, really tough, difficult tough, tough, stuff, tough, you know. Yeah, yeah. So f we're actually on our way in two weeks' time, on the 17th of April, my assistant will remind me, on the 11th or 17th of April, we're off to Hong Kong to go and look for owners, you know. So there's quite a South African connection with Hong Kong. I'm really good friends with Dougie. Obviously, Lyle's out there, Carice is out there. So Luke is there too, yeah, Luke. Luke is out there as well. Yeah. So uh, I've reached out to Dougie. He's going to set up a couple of... Um, lunches and dinners with some prospective owners um, so we continue to do that I, I, I will always try and bring people to South Africa and South African racing no matter where I live in the world how much or how little money I've got because this is where I'm from really do you know what I mean I grew up two kilometers from Turf and Tien. I used to go there all the time you know um, I've got one of my best friends arrives tomorrow from England he's coming just for the derby sure. because him and I used to go to Turf and Tien. 40 years ago Jeez, no, as buddies and we, we, he works for me he's worked for me for like 18 years but he's a very good friend of mine he's coming tomorrow because and I said to him just come this was our dream like this do you know what I mean like yeah, to be in the derby you know? story. yeah it's just so uh, and again with that horse you know Mike Mike gave me the share Mike the horse gave me the share in Billy Bowlegs I was like are you joking it's a United States man <laughs> leave me alone <laughs> I thought so literally what I said to him leave me alone it's a United States he goes just it's a nice horse. When Alex said he was a nice horse, I phoned Chris. I said, I'm giving you a share in Billy Bowlegs. No money. I'm giving you a share in Billy Bowlegs. And that, look where we are now. We're in the Jeez. derby. Well, I If we win the derby, we're in the big one. Yeah. Automatically. Yeah, you're Aut correct. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, no, nice tie. Be, yeah. no tie. No tie. <laughs> no tie. But uh, we'll see you at Turf and Tank because we're going. Uh, when are you flying up? Tomorrow? No, we're flying up this evening. Uh, tonight, that's yeah, right. I'm yeah, flying up tonight. Up tomorrow, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 and then he arrives tomorrow morning. Gabriel's his name. Chris, unfortunately, couldn't make it, but he'll be there in spirit. Um, hopefully, he runs well. His favourite. You know, I mean, it's just like, it's unbelievable. It's very really like, story. After yeah, all absolutely. those years. and yeah. But you've got to buy the right stock, you've got to have the right trainers. To get you into that yeah, position. Yeah, you know. yeah. Now, well, I look forward to seeing you out there. Yeah, we'll it'll see be fantastic. You. Are you going to judge I am going to. I don't know if I've told you yet. Oh, just, uh, give me a chance. Are you going to the Seychelles? Let me at least go to China. Oh, when are you going to the Seychelles? Oh, you are going? Yeah, second of oh. May. Oh, that's nice. Did so. you put your leave in? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the boss. Now, um, yeah, so we go tomorrow to Johannesburg and we'll be back on Saturday night. So, yeah, I am going. I want to go and see a few things. Uh, and uh, enjoy. I'm going to be on the Way to, to Win show. And uh, Clyde Basil, when he comes to Durban, we're going to get Clyde onto our show. What's too. it called? Way to Win? I heard it was called something else. Oh, don't be naughty now. What was it? You've got well, the it's name. Waiting to Win. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, lovely. That's a good bunch of guys there. And we look forward to being in their studio tomorrow. But in the home straight now, with about 50 meters left to go of this podcast, 
podcast. I want to find out a bit about you, though. What are your hobbies? What uh, do you do besides racing? Sure. And, and do, you, do you have time? What else interests you? Uh, I will answer that. I just want to tell you something else about selecting trainers, right? Yes. When Money Heist won yesterday, my other trainers all said, well done. Okay. Sportsman. Very okay. important. Okay, sportsmanship, yeah, absolutely. Very important. There's no jealousy, there's no... Because we're up front with everybody. Yes. I'm sending you this, I'm sending you that. I've just bought this, it's going to you. And that's how it is. Yeah, Like, Not, oh, you're getting everything. It doesn't work like that. You talk about sportsmanship, often, not often, but often enough, I I see it at the races there. You, you know, the guys who've been a short head finish and the trainer in the second box were joking. He said, come on, leave me alone, man. You know, it's twice you've seen me today. And there's a bit of banter and shake hands. And it's good to see because it's tough. It's, it's a tough game and, 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 and the emotions run high and, and, and people yeah. get agitated. But you're right, sportsmanship. Okay, yeah, so, so that's an important you. thing. So what are your hobbies? What are your hobbies? What else do you like doing? Okay, so unbelievably, the most sport I watch at home is golf. I don't watch racing. I only watch when my horses run. And then I'll study form when I have to. Um, But there's four months of the year where I only watch one sport. I know this is not going to be too popular yet, but I'm absolutely obsessed with American football. Okay. I love the statistics. I love all that stuff. I follow it passionately. I go to games. uh, I watch the... uh, the NFL solidly. Yeah, but how can you? There we go. There we go. Yeah. How can, yeah. we go. How can you squash a sixty-minute game into four hours? I mean, Jesus. Have you been to one? No. Well, everybody I've taken has gone back for more. Yeah. I promise you. Oh, cool. Because it's Americanized. Yes, I know. It's I, I pref- souped up. I prefer baseball to. Well, like that also drags on. Yes, I know. But it- okay, so here's uh, the thing. Like, for example, you go to a rugby match. When do you get a beer? Half time. Half time. And I, and, I, and, I, and I don't even no, but the thing is, if I went to an NFL you go to game, an NFL match f- for for four hours, <laughs> I'd be bloody assholes by the end of it. <laughs> yes, you might be, but <coughs> look, it's 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 just it's just a spectacular show, and they do it well. Okay, so look, I have been, I, I do go to live games loads, but I do like I watch it full time on the telly. So NFL, my absolute, my absolute. Also, I think it's my favourite thing, but to watch. I like watching golf. I like watching NFL. I've got a few businesses. Uh, I'm in the fiber optics business. Um, I've got an 11 year old boy. I'm a single parent, uh, but like weirdly single because we live 100 meters apart. <laughs> yeah. So it's all about him and him being happy and running between the two houses and whatever. Uh, um, but most of my time, my business has run really well. So most of my time is spent on trying to get people into racing and to love South African racing. You know, I, I was on television in England for about 15 years, doing basically what you guys do over here. Um, and through that, I met a lot of people. You know, I think you and I have had this conversation. People would email the studio, hey, Joe, fancy go for a beer? And I'd go. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, and I connected with a lot of people. and So that's what I like to do. Through the golf, you know, we do a lot of charity events. The RC does an annual poker tournament for charity. Uh, we do an annual uh, golf day for charity. Uh, very involved with English and Welsh rugby. The Botham family are very close to me. So I, I, I don't know, do you remember when Mr. Maloney won at, uh, yes. mm-hmm. at Gravel? I had yeah. five from the Cardiff. I had five of the That's Cardiff. Right. That's right. Yes, yes. Right. Yeah. I had five of the Cardiff rugby boys here. I mean, I let him. I let one of him do the interview. I mean, they had an unbelievable. T- they, had, like, they loved it, and they involved now. Yeah. I had them at. Foss Lash last week, uh, two of the rugby players at Foss Lash last week. By the way, I think racing, flat racing is difficult. You want to try a bit of jump, jump racing. racing. So yeah. my horse ran in a race last week, was beaten 72 lengths. Sure. Good run, they said. <laughs> <laughs> good run. Oh, the black stayed on top. Yeah. Uh, good, good run. Well, I, I probably I said, ran third. Well, it was only a five horse race, I think. I think a six horse race, she ran, she ran fifth, but. I said, what do you mean good run? Just expect, because I am learning about the jump. I've had like seven winners over jumps, but I'm still learning. So what do you mean good run? Because well, look, she jumped well, but she hadn't run for 400 days. So she got a bit tired and he put his hands down the last four furlongs. I was like, oh, okay, the last four furlongs. <laughs> <laughs> so you, th- you, think, you think trying to get a horse to, run, to, to win from draw 10 on the pot is difficult. <laughs> you want to maybe consider sending one over two miles and three quarters. Sheesh, that's interesting. Uh, in, uh, 
I think I put it on my Facebook, the photo of the jock after the race. Like, all you see is this. Everything else is just brown. Been full of mud, yeah. 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 <laughs> so, listen, so I like, I like doing stuff like that, taking the boys. Um, so when I found out Cardiff were here and that, because I know, uh, I know James both of them quite well, I said, what are you boys up to? Oh, no, we're sitting in the hotel doing nothing. Come racing. Great day. Fantastic. Yeah. Joe, we, we, we've done our hour. We've have done we? our hour. We have indeed. And uh, if there's anything else that you want to add, but it was just lovely that, that we were able to touch base with you and find out about what you do. But as I always do, and I get a bit of flack for it, which uh, I don't mind because I'll always do it, as I said it on TV the other day, to thank the owners and to cherish the owners. Yeah. Yes, everybody in racing is needed. As you said, it's like everybody. a body, everybody. But the owners in particular you know have their time in the winner's box you are one of an you're an owner you're in the in, in the in the hot seat so thank you for for all your interest and input and and to bringing people into our beautiful country and yeah it's just wonderful and and maybe when you know you come back again if we've missed out anything or you want to add on to anything uh, we'll talk again but it was great that we got you here in this yep. podcast we, we thoroughly enjoyed our time well i'll leave it with since we're talking about owners i'll leave it with something that i've never seen in all my years of racing since i started following jimmy anderson in the 80s the race cards in Cape Town have an index for owners yes uh, th they've just started that correct yeah that was that was so Mr. Bortz whoever's idea that was has executed that it was it, it's such a small thing but it, it, I looked at it I thought geez because what a stroke yeah do you yeah. know what I mean like it's just like do they print race cards in Cape Town well, they or print computer. Well, no, uh, yeah, no, they, 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 like, they do. Yeah, do they? Yeah, yeah they do. Uh, print. There was race cards on the table. Yes, yes, yeah. When, oh, they do. They do print yeah. Race cards. But, so, I mean, but I mean, you can get a computer form printed as well. Yes, absolutely. When like I go to Turfitt on print. Saturday, they'll give me a computer form. Yeah, there is a printed computer form. For, yeah, <coughs> you're correct. You will get a printed. Uh, obviously, this yeah. are printed. Because no, that you done yourself. Yeah, by yourself. But uh, infringing <laughs> copyright rule. I have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> we do promote computer forms, winning no, forms, race cards. Yeah, yeah. I'm joking. He's waiting to win there. Yeah, yeah, well, but, win. but I thought that was just such a like a subtle, clever touch. Yeah, no, no, but you do get they do print at the races. You yeah. can't you can't buy a printed computer form in the shop no. or a printed race car. No, but at the races, at the they'll races. print sixty copies or eighty yeah. copies or a hundred well, copies, and they'll be so do they you do. Realize that print. we do the race card. Yes, I know. In our office, in our office, oh, you do. Yeah. Well, putting the owners' index in. It's just well, a small thing. So yeah, we, we, we must follow up on that. Speak to Yeah, speak to her because it is a wonderful touch. It's a wonderful touch. It's nothing, but actually, it's so. It's a nothing, but it's massive. Yeah, hundred percent. It's a, a yarnia, like Afrikaans say yarnia. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's both sides at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. And know? that's why I also too in your previews I like to say it's uh, as you did yesterday. As I did yesterday, money house runs. It's in the parading. Joe is here. Yeah. Make the owner feels extra special. Yeah. Like you want to make the punters, everybody. Everybody, feels yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Not one of us is more important than the other. Yeah. But and we all need it. But we all need to work together for it to work. Yeah, you know what sure. I mean. Like you can't yeah. remove. The heart and leave the brain it doesn't yeah, work yeah, like yeah, that it does, and, yeah, yeah absolutely and, and it's the same in racing so yeah joe thanks very much Thank uh, you. lovely to to be safe travels for the rest of the day and we'll see you up in joburg apologies Andy, for the uh, coughing no no problem with the coughing uh, whole and lardy it's been brilliant <laughs> you happy anything else to i'll watch you on tv tomorrow yes well, and Saturday. of course to our sponsors card call and uh, score 10 and scores uh, six and score 10 and all the lovely soccer bets that you know about uh, we wish you well, be safe, and as always, we'll see you from the number one box at Hollywood Bets Gravel on Sunday. Thank you for watching this week's episode of In the Box Seat Podcast right until the very end. We hope that you enjoyed it because we certainly did. If you missed last week's podcast, In the Box Seat Podcast with Andrew and myself, please go and watch it here. And uh, last week's uh, episode will be right there for you to go and enjoy and watch as uh, we know you will certainly enjoy in the Box Seat podcast from last week.